Hallelujah. I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me. Get set my hand, my feet, I'm talking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me. And I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me. Get set my hand, my feet, I'm talking about what what he's done for me, I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me, and I get joy, joy, thinking about just what he's done for me, I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me, Yes, in my hand, my feet, I'm talking about what he's done for me, I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me. And oh, how I wonder, just when my soul looks back, well, how I ever made it through my sinful, wicked path. I did everything I thought I wanted to do, and it brought me down. But God reached out and held me, and I'm here to tell you now that I get joy, joy, thinking about what He's done for me. And I get joy, joy, thinking about just what he's done for me. Get set my hand, my feet, I'm talking about just what he's done for me. I get joy, joy, thinking about just what he's done for me. And I get joy, joy, thinking about just what he's done for me. I get joy, joy, thinking about just what he's done for me. Get set my hand, my feet. I'm talking about then what he's done for me. I get joy, joy, thinking about what he's done for me. And oh, how I wonder just when my soul looks back. Well, how I ever made it through my sinful, wicked path. I did everything I thought I wanted to do, and it brought me down. But God reached out and held me, and I'm here to tell you now that I get joy, joy, thinking about then what He's done for me. I get joy, joy, thinking about then what He's done for me. Yes, in my hand, my feet, I'm talking about then what He's done for me. And I get joy, joy, thinking about what He's done for me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his wonderful benefits. Ain't the Lord good this morning? Has the Lord been all right? Has the Lord made a way for anybody in here on this morning? Has it brought you out of anything? I don't know about y'all, but God has brought me out of some stuff. God has delivered me from some stuff. God has made a way out of no way. So I ain't got no better sense but to get up on the first day of the week and to come into God's house with a praise on my mind. And let me just put this disclaimer out there. He may not have done anything for you. So if you want to sit there like a bump on the log and act like everything is just fine, that's your prerogative. But if the Lord has been good to you and if the Lord has made a way if the Lord has opened the door you ain't got no other choice but the blessed and they, I will bless the Lord at all time not some, but all time and his praises shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make a boast in the Lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad he's a wonderful savior and who wouldn't serve a God like this He's so good. We bless God for each and every single one of you that are here on this morning. We thank God for all of you that are visiting with us. So glad always to have you here. And we pray that you feel welcome and that you are enjoying your time in the Lord this morning. And we bless, praise God for all of you that are watching us via live stream. We thank for all the, all the places that you could have stopped by this morning. You stopped by to be with us and we're thankful for that. And prayerfully, you'll be blessed by those things that are said here on today. As you all can see, it's a little different in here 
here this morning. Things have been uh, spaced out. You ain't, can't reach over and touch a seat or whatever. Um, this is all for our protection, as has already um, been stated, um, as we recognize that these, the variants of the virus are um, getting a little out of control. It's just good to have people um, in leadership that look not just for themselves, but they're looking out for you as well. Um, so we're making the best decisions for everybody. Um, and this thing is serious, y'all. It's already been stated. Um, I lost a cousin, 27 years old. Um, she and I went to Faulkner together. She graduated a year before I, but 27 years old, um, passed away um, from COVID-19. Um, so um, keep them in your prayers. We want to be praying for everybody um, as this thing and make sure that we're doing what we can do to keep ourselves safe uh, from this thing because God gave everybody good sense, right? You, you can trust in the Lord, but he still gave you good sense, amen? Amen, amen. Anybody come hear a word from the Lord this morning? Amen. I believe you came to the right place. We'll be in the book of Judges this morning. Uh, not a place we go very often. Judges chapter 5. And there's a word from the Lord here, I believe. And we'll begin at verse number 2 and read down to verse number 5. And then we'll shoot down to verse number 23. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And the Bible says, Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinom, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel, when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled, and the heavens dropped, and the clouds also dropped water. The mountains melted from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. Verse number 23. Curse ye Miras, says the angel of the Lord. Curse ye bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to help the Lord, to the help the Lord against the mighty. Amen. May the Lord um, have made a blessing to, as we read this word, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, the Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Pray with me, if you will. Father God in heaven is indeed, we are grateful. We're grateful at this time, Father, for all of your many blessings. Lord, we thank you for this time that you've blessed us with, that we can come and feast at the table of your word. Father, somebody came seeking you this morning, Father. I pray that they'll find you. Somebody came in here this morning, Father, weighed down with the cares of this world. Father, I pray that you will lighten the load for them this morning. Father, somebody came this morning and they don't know you as their Lord and Savior. Father, I pray that they'll get to know you this morning. Father, I pray that you would hide me behind your cross, that no flesh would take any glory in that that you ought to receive. And Father, if you do this for us, we'll be so ever mindful to glorify you and to give you praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let all those that love God say amen. 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 I want you to look to somebody this morning. Look like they came to give the Lord a praise and look at them real serious like you got a mean mug. And look at them and say, this means war. They've been with a wall. Find you somebody else this morning. And look at them and say, this means war. In Judges chapter 5, the Bible has a profound verse. God is declaring war on his enemies. The people who have attacked and harassed Israel. Sisera, the king, and his fierce army of 600 chariots of iron. And God says, I'm going to war against the enemies of my people. When God goes to war, verse 2 said that the people willingly offered themselves. Listen, nobody had to beg them. Nobody had to plead with them. They willingly offered themselves to join the battle and to march out to the field and to fight the battle and to fight for the Lord God Almighty. Now verse 4 said that when God went to war that the earth noticed that God was going to war. 
the earth that God made, the earth that he completed, and the earth began to tremble. The earth said, if God, my creator, is going to war with somebody, I'm not just going to sit idly by and watch while my God goes to war. And the Bible says that it began to shake and it began to tremble. Can you imagine trying to fight? And under you, the ground just start trembling and shaking, got an earthquake going on. Not only that, but then the heavens drop, the Bible says. That's a reference to the dew and the fall. God don't play fair, let me tell you. God, God don't play fair. And, and when he decides to fight, he's got the ground under his enemy shaking. And it's like creation knows that its creator is going to war. And when they saw God fighting the enemies of God's people in God's kingdom, then the scripture says that the heavens came low and the fog set in. They can't even hardly see in front of themselves. And then the clouds in the sky said, well, if God is going to war, then I'm going to get into the fight. I don't know what I can do. I can't preach. I can't sing. I can't swing an axe. But I know what I can do. This is a cloud up in heaven saying, I can rain and I can pour down rain and get those chariot wheels to spin it. Get them stuck in a mud hole to where they can't even compete with the Lord God Almighty. I'll do my part and I'm going to participate because when God is going to war, all of those that are connected to him got to go to war as well. And then the mountains laid low, the Bible says. If they tried to hide y'all and run and get in the cave, the mountain said, I'm going to lay low and you can't find no hiding place over here and you ain't going to be able to use me for no cover. Everything is cooperating when God is fighting his enemies. And Deborah said, you know what? I can't do nothing else. I'm going to sing my song. And I'm going to assist God in the battle. I'm a woman. I'm a female in a male-dominated society. Back then, and she said, I got a song, and it may not be much, but I'm going to put my song in assistance when fighting them for the Lord God of heaven. Then verse number 19, it says that the stars began to fight from heaven. God got everything coming to assist him. How do the stars fight? Stars are not moving. They're fixed. And, and that's how people back then directed themselves. They got direction from the stars. The way the Magi knew where to go was to follow the star. And so they used the stars that were fixed in position. But this day, the stars said, oh, my creator, the one that named me, the one that hung me up and named me by name. Because the Bible said that he named every star. Ain't that what the Bible said? And the star said, well, if my creator is fighting a battle, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to hide behind something and I'm going to turn my light down real low. And they're going to lose their direction down there on the battlefield because they got fog on them. They got the earth shaking. You got the rain falling. You got the fog standing down. You got the mountain standing down low. They're just in a mess because it's time for war. Aren't you glad that God is on your side this morning? And then verse number 21 said that the river said, well, if God is in a battle, bless God, his enemies are my enemies, and I'm going to make the river really get to running wild. I'm going to get the undercurrent really going strong. And all you got to do is see one of those enemies, just push them over in the river, and I'll take them down under, and they ain't coming back up. I'll fight with my God. The river even got into the fight, y'all. Heaven went to war. And when it was time for war, all of creation got in agreement and in the battle fighting. They're not sitting by y'all watching the battle. And I want to tell you today that heaven has declared war in our day and time on demonism. Heaven has declared war on carnality. Heaven has declared war on sin. Heaven has declared war on sorrow. Heaven has declared war on guilt. Heaven has declared war on condemnation. Heaven has declared war on 
abortion and sexual sins that are destroying our life. Heaven has declared war on carnality and lukewarmness and the call of the spirit is y'all need to put all hands on them. Everybody needs to enlist this morning. Don't everybody needs to invest. Not one of us need to stand by with our hands in our pocket watching the wall and doing nothing. We need to get involved. What I'm saying to you is when all of this happens, suddenly the Bible said an angel notices that everything God created is going to war. Every person willingly gave themselves to fight in the battle. But there was one tribe, there's always somebody don't want to do right. But there was one tribe called the tribe of Moraz. And the scripture said in verse number 23, an angel noticed them standing idle with their hands in their pockets during a time when God was going to war. And they're standing there doing nothing but watching. And the angel under the inscription of God says, I curse you, Miraz, the tribe of Mirah. I curse you, this people of Mirah. I curse you bitterly. I place a curse on you. Why? Why would God bitterly curse these people? Were they committing some horrible sin? No. Were they doing something awful? No. You know what they were doing? They were standing by inactive he cursed them bitterly because God said I'm in a battle and if you're not going to help me win this war I ain't got no use for it. the scripture said that God was in a battle and you came not to help the Lord against his enemies when God goes to war and he says it's time for the people of God to willingly give themselves. And this scripture teaches that if we don't get involved in the battle, then a curse comes upon us. And it's a bitter curse. No one can stand by in a time like this and not be involved in warfare. Matthew 12 puts it like this. Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. He that does not gather with me scatters abroad. In other words, Jesus is saying there is no neutral ground in times like these. If I am going to war on sin, the people of God got to go to war on sin. If I am going to war on shame, the people of God got to do the same thing. If I'm going to war on guilt, you got to do the same thing. There ain't, tell nobody, there ain't no middle ground. There ain't no middle ground. There is no middle ground. It has vanished. You are either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. You got to get it or get out. But you cannot sit on the sidelines without anything happening to you. They call them casualties of war. This is strong. The greatest battle that we have, church, is not always with Satan. Not always with Satan or society. What is it with? Boredom. Masses of people who profess Christ come to church when they feel like it. And they serve God out of boredom. They're not involved. They sit on the sidelines and they watch the wall, but they never want to get into the battle. I want to know here this morning, who's on the Lord's side this morning? Who in this hour is going to rise to their feet and say, I'm going to offer myself unto God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. If the stars got sense enough to fight, if the horses got sense enough to trap, if the earth shake, if the cloud rain, why in the world can't I get in and do what I'm supposed to do? For those of you that have been washed in his blood, been sanctified, and been set free, we got a job to do. Yes. You got gifts, church. You got talents. You got abilities. God can use you. You need to get into a fight. It ain't no retirement in this battle. I don't care if nobody told you that. It ain't no retirement in this battle. There's no place where you reach where you are finally safe. 
as long as you are in the flesh, you are in a battle. And we will suffer the curse of Meroz if we don't fight. You are either fighting or you're failing. But you're not doing nothing and getting by with it. All you have to do to go to hell is do nothing. And I prove that. I, I'm not being for sick. I prove that. The servant was given two talents in Matthew chapter 25. And the Bible called him wicked. Not because of immorality. He was wicked because he was slowful. Because he was unprofitable. He was wicked because he did not use what God had gave him. He didn't ever put what he had into the fight. Don't tell me that God has not given you something. He's given each and every single one of us something. And when he goes to war, and his kingdom goes to war to save souls and to bring our king back, we are not to have an attitude that is just laid back. Sitting back, chilling, cruising, relaxing, shoes, some beef, all that, you know, all that good stuff. Unused talents that we are holding back and we never offer them to the service of the kingdom of God. The Bible said, because he did nothing with what he was given, the Bible called him wicked, unprofitable, and a slowful servant. There's something that you can do. Look at somebody say, you can do something. There's a gift that you have. There's a talent that you have. There's an ability that you have. There's a high unemployment rate in the church today. I'm not talking about in the world. There's a high unemployment rate in the church today. We got to get involved with the work of the Lord. That was an invisible sign out there. I know you didn't see it when you pulled up, but it said help won't it and please apply on the inside. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are so very few. We need laborers. We need prayer warriors. Somebody got to intercede for the church. We need volunteers. We need somebody that can run cameras and do all of this. Somebody got to do something. God, this means war. Well, God is going to war. Well, well, I ain't got the right job right now. Yes, you do. If you ain't got a job, why you ain't praying? You ought to be coming every opportunity that you ought to be in your house praying three and four times a day. If you do that, instead of sitting around waiting on somebody to call you, you'll be amazed at the opportunity that will come your way. Well, I think I'm going to retire. Well, it's fine if you retire from your job, but you can never retire from the army of the Lord that I am talking about. If you don't have a job and you're a senior citizen, I, you can because you can pray for somebody. Yeah. You can speak a kind word to somebody. Yeah. You can start praying and volunteering and doing something in the army of the Lord. Yeah. Whatever you can do, ask the Lord to use. Somebody say, Lord, use me. Lord, use me. And don't refuse me. Don't refuse. I say, use me, Lord. Yeah. And don't refuse me. Well, I don't care. I'm just a preacher. I got a license to do what I'm going to do, so I'm going to tell it whether you like it or you don't. I'm preaching about what are we going to do when it's time to go to war. Amen. We need some people to go to work yeah. and get rich yeah. so they can bless the church. Yeah. 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 Everybody in ministry ain't passing our bulletins. They man somebody. Some of us got to go to work and get real successful and abundantly rich so that we can come back and be a blessing to somebody else. I'm preaching better than letting on. I know, I know. No, tell, look at somebody and say, go get a job and get rich so you can bless the church. Amen, somebody. Need me to paint a picture of that? Matthew chapter 20 and verse 6 says, they're standing around, they said, why do you stand here all day idle? The next part of the verse says, why? And they said to him, because no one hired us. Nobody hired me. I do it for the Lord, but I ain't getting paid for it. Everybody, we ought to get to a point 
to where we are doing something for God, ain't nobody got to give us anything for it. If you, are, if God has given you an ability, you ought to use it to the glory of God, and God will bless you for your service. God will use you for your service, and that's why some of us will never get to where we desire to be because we want a benefit for everything. And we pick up a piece of paper. We want a plaque with our name on it because we picked up a piece of paper. If we swept the flow, we want somebody to have a meeting about putting our name on a seat because we done swept up the flow. But if the Lord has been good to you and if the Lord woke you up this morning and if the Lord is blessing you, Lord, whatever I can do, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Mark chapter 14 and verse 8 says that a woman broke an expensive alabaster box and began to pour it out on the feet of Jesus. And Jesus immortalized that woman. He immortalized her with these profound words. He said, wherever the gospel is preached, She'll be remembered because she has done what she could. Amen. She did what she could, church. That's so strong. That's so powerful. She did what she could. She was not trying to do what she couldn't do. She did what she could. And all of us, everybody can preach that in everybody's ministry. Everybody can't sing that in everybody's ministry. Everybody can't do everything, but guess what? Everybody can do something. When the toe gets in its place, when the foot gets in its place, when the ankle gets in its place, when everything works together, we can get ahead. When everybody is doing their part. And so if we want the blessings of God, and if we want to get ahead, we got to get involved. We got to become a part. I cannot just sit on the sideline and watch everybody else get their time. Everybody else get their turn. Me as a child of God, I ought to be witness enough to want to serve God. I ought to be witness enough to want to be involved in the service of God. It, it ain't got to be nothing extravagant. If we ain't doing nothing but getting together to pray for somebody, guess what? I want to be on the list. I want to pray for somebody. If it ain't nothing but being on the list to give somebody an encouraging word, I want to be the one to give somebody an encouraging word. Let me tell you, I ain't got two people is to rub together but if I can give somebody a pack of ramen noodles guess what I'm going to give a pack of ramen noodles because I recognize that this person may be in a dire straight today but it could be me tomorrow so while I have an opportunity I'm going to be a blessing because I never know when I'm going to be standing in need of a blessing there's always something that you can do for the Lord do what you can do church you remember Naaman? Naaman refused to get in the Jordan River and dip seven times. And his servant, y'all, had to take him to the school of the supernatural when he told him, if he asked you to do something, if the prophet had asked you to do something grand and big, you would have did that without no question. Too many of us resist the involvement in the small stuff, in the little stuff, in the behind the scenes stuff. But if you are too great for small things, then you are too little for the big things. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. If we love the people that nobody wants, God will give you the people that everybody wants. If we be the church that loves everybody, reaches out to everybody, God will give us the desires of our hearts and those things that we stand in need of. We ought to get to a place, church. The first thing the apostle Paul said when the Lord changed him, what was the first thing he said? He said, Lord, what would you have me to do? Hear my Lord. How many of us asking God that question on a daily basis? Lord, what would you have me to do? That, that's our problem. That's why we can't overcome because we were reporting and we look into ourselves. We ought to be looking at the God. Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, what is your plan for my life? Lord, show me your will. Show me your plan. Lord, 
if there are people in my life that I don't need to be around, Lord, move them out of the way. Lord, if there are things that I'm involved in that I don't need to be involved in, Lord, take it away. Lord, if I come out of there kicking and screaming and scratching, Lord, take me out of there and get me to where it is that you want me to be. We are in a war, church. And a lot of us going around acting like we ain't in battle. Your family is at war. Your family is being attacked. The very makeup of the family is being destroyed. Every TV show you turn on, every movie you turn on, every commercial is showing you some kind of alternate form of what the family is. But if God said it what it is, that's what it is. And we got to get to a place to where we gonna be the church or not. If God said it, that's it. I don't care if it's your cousin, I don't care if it's your little nephew, your little uncle, whatever it is, if it's God's word, we got to stand on the word of God. The family is being attacked. Why every show you turn on a brother got to be with another brother? The family is attacked. Everything that's supposed to be this way is being shown to be another way and done another way. And that's why you got to pray for your children. You got to plead the blood over your children. You got to intercede for your children because the devil is trying to have his way with your children. But Satan, the Lord rebuke thee. You ain't got no room over here. God's word is true, church. And that's what's going to judge us in the last day. Who are you going to serve? Choose you this day. Who it is that you're going to serve? You can't be with God and have everybody like you at the same time. It's either you're going to be for God or you're going to be for everybody else. And when you die, it's going to be you and God. Your family is being attacked. Your family is being attacked. Not only are children being attacked, your marriage is under attack. Your marriage is under attack. That's why the devil sending everything past your way. He know what you like. He know how you want it cut. He know how you want it built. He's sending everything your way. Trying to get your eyes wondering. Trying to get your mind wondering. Trying to get you in another place. To where you will do what God is not pleased with. You got to plead the blood church. You got to call on Jesus. You got to bring yourself under subjection. Devil you can't have my children. You a lying wonder. Devil you can't have my marriage. You a lying wonder. Devil you can't have my mind. You are going about having a good day. Thinking positive thoughts. It don't take but one negative thing to mess up your whole day. But the Bible says I will keep them in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee. Devil you can't have my mind. We are at war church. And we're not fighting with bullets and guns. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But a mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. Some of us got some strongholds this morning. We need to be let loose. Some of us got some things that we are fighting with. We need the Lord to take them up off of us. Some of us in here have been dealing with things 10, 15 years. It's time to let that stuff go. It's time to get it off of you. It's time to ask God to take control of those things and create in you a clean heart and renew in you a right spirit. We are at war. And the devil got you on his most wanted list. He wants you. He wants you. He wants your kids. He wants them. And that's why you ought not just plead the blood on them while they're in your house, but when they get out of your house, doubly plead the blood of Jesus on them. You ought to doubly plead the blood of Jesus on them. Because right now, you ain't at the house for them to just come and tell you about what they're going on. You are not there to see the things that they are dealing with. But when they get somewhere to where they are by themselves, Lord, please keep them. Lord, keep them covered. Lord, deliver them from the bondage.
bondages of the devil, Lord. Deliver them from the tricks of Satan, Lord. Keep them out of harm's way, Lord. Keep them out of danger, Lord. Don't condemn them in their present condition, but spare them just a little while longer. Give them a little more time. Don't let them suffer the consequences of their action. Give them a little more time. Give them a little bit more time. We're at war, church. And we ain't fighting with bullets and guns. You're going to have to learn how to be in the presence of God. You're going to have to learn how to seek God. How to seek God's will. Because if you don't have a relationship with God, let me tell you, the devil is going to come and he's going to beat you on the left side of your head, on the right side of your head. He's going to have his way with you. But I don't know, I believe I got about three or four people here this morning that say, Satan, you are a liar. I am a child of God. I've been saved by Jesus Christ. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm a child of the King. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm chosen, elect of God. And you may have a plan, but let me tell you, you ain't doing nothing but wasting your time. Because he said, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, to give you a hope, to give you a future, and an expected end. Look at somebody and say, this means war. This means war. And let me tell you something. When you learn how to get in the presence of God, and you learn how to have that constant relationship with God and the devil think he gonna have his way with you and you're doing all you can to fight the devil and you feel like you ain't win. Let me tell you, God looks down from heaven, said we ain't get into that thing to win, just get the ball. God said, I ain't get into that thing to make that start to shake it. God said, I ain't get into that thing and the rain just start falling down.
hold that just and sit on the sideline. Wait on everything to come. If you ain't got nothing else to do, as I said, you ought to be on your knees praying. You ought to be calling on God. You ought to be praying. For, and we got to get to a place in our prayers to where we don't just pray for what we want, what we need, and how we want it. You got to learn how to pray for somebody else. You got to learn how to go to God and ask God to bless somebody else. But they got love about Jesus is that he's not spending his time in heaven asking God to bless him, but he's going to see him on your behalf, on your behalf, on your behalf. He's going to see him for each and every single one of us. Thank you. Thank you. We're at war. Yeah. We're at war, church. Because the very word of God, as we know it, is being thrown down. Yeah. Seems like everything going down but the word of God. Church, we're at war. Yeah. And as the people of God, we got to make sure that we continue to stand upon the word of God, that we continue to let people know that Jesus is still in the soul saving business, that the same God that healed and saved yesterday is the same God that's doing it today. We got to stand on the word of God, continue to preach that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, that he is but one God and one Father of all, that he is all that is in us all. We got to continue to stand on because we're at war. We're at war, church. And we got to be ready. Because if we're not, we're going to find ourselves in the same condition that we have now. Walking around here feeling defeated. Walking around here feeling depressed. When am I going to get a break? Walking around here feeling like you died. Well, it seems, oh, boy, it's me. It seems like the wicked just prospered that child. I'm just going through it. Watch out now. Everybody got the same old song. Yeah. Yeah. But when are you going to get to a place in your life where you can stand as a child of God and say, devil, throw what you want to throw. Devil, bring what you want to bring. I'm not going to be swayed. God said, I'll be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of the water. The wind, you might blow, but I ain't going nowhere. Rain, you might fall, but I ain't going nowhere. And you got to learn as a child of God to get to a place where you can stand. No matter what's going on. No matter what you're dealing with. You're going to have to learn how to stand. When things are falling apart, you got to learn how to stand. When everything is going to Ray Church, you got to learn how to stand. And be confident in the great God of heaven. Because if he sent us out to do battle, let me tell you, he's given us everything that we need to not just fight, but to win. He's given us everything that we need to overcome and to do what it is that he's called us to do. God ain't going to send you out there on no mission that you're going to fail. God's going to send you out there so that you can succeed. God is with us, church. And even when you feel like you're by yourself, because we have those moments. Don't let nobody tell you. Don't let me tell you that you don't have moments where you don't feel alone and you feel like you're by yourself. But even when you cannot see anybody else, you ought to always know that I got a God that's watching. I got a God that sits high and he looks low. He sees everything. He hears everything. And if his eye is on the sparrow, guess what? I know he watches me. If God cares for the lilies of the field and the power of the air, how much more? You ever met a bird in the street? Where the worms at? Where the bugs at? What I'm going to eat? They don't worry because they got a God that's providing for them. What you worried for? David said, I never say the right thing. That's your strong word, never. That means notwithstanding. There's absolutely no evidence of the contrary. Never have I ever seen the righteous forsaken. No, it's seed big and bread. Man, let me tell you, I went in the store the other day. I told Marissa, I said, man, you see milk went up to $3. You know what? But guess what? I had $3 to pay for it, praise God. 
praise God, I had, I had three dollars to pay for it, guess what? And let me tell you, you never get to a place to where, man, this is happening and this is happening and I don't know how I'm going to do this and how I'm going to do that. I don't care if, if bread get up to $20 a loaf, guess what? God is going to make sure that you as his child have what you need to get what you need because he is a provider. Waymaker, sustainer, he gonna give you what you stand in need of. We're at war. We're at war. And you can't go in war around here. Because if you don't, God coming, if you do, God coming after you. If you do, he coming after you. All my military folk in here, y'all, y'all, y'all had better sense than to go a wall. Bro, Smith said he tried it, but you know you got man, you got you can't you can't go no air wall. Because what was gonna have somebody was coming looking for you. They coming to your mama house, they coming to Auntie and there, your uncle Doug, where you hang out. They coming, they coming looking for you, and they gonna find you. Well, if they can find you, what do you think about the one that made you? The one that made the world. The one that threw the stars out there in the sky and named each and every single one. What do you think about him? Oh, you remember that man named Jonah? Jonah got to running. Jonah thought he was going to hide from God. And, and, and Jonah thought he was getting somewhere. Found himself down there at the bottom of a ship and ended up in the belly of a fish. But he eventually had to do what it was that God had called him to do. So could it be? that the reason you are experiencing so much turbulence on your journey. Could it be that the reason it feels like you are experiencing so much friction with everything that you go through is because God is trying to get you to where he wants you to be. God is trying to do a work in your life and he's saying, I can't deal with you while you're over here. Let me tell you, sometimes God got to get you by yourself away from everything else, away from people, away from things to where God can deal with you. It wasn't until he got Jacob by himself that he could bless him. Some of us gotta, gotta get by ourselves. I'm talking about get by ourselves. And I find myself these days, you know, I used to be like most people, you know, pray them the two and three minute prayers, you know, and I'd be done. You know, the prayer I've been praying for five, ten years, I'd have memorized it, I don't have to put no effort into it now. You know, I, I, I tell the truth, shame the devil, you know. You know, but now I've got to a place to where I, I prefer spending time with God. You know, I. I, I, you know, I, I prefer just laying out and just giving everything to God. Lord, you know me. Lord, you know my upsetting from my down rising. Lord, you know my going to from my going from. Lord, bless me in the way that you know I need to be blessed. And when you get to a place to where you stop being in such a hurry with God. The way you stop rushing. Preacher, you sing a song. There are days I like to be all alone with Christ, our Lord. And I can just tell him about my worries all alone. Some of us, some of us need to just get by ourselves so, so God can deal with us and so we can deal with ourselves. Some of us haven't forgiven folk for stuff that they've done. You need to get by yourself. Some of us are still hating people for things that they did. We got to get by ourselves. So God can deal with you. Some of us full of pride. We got to get by ourselves so God can deal with us. Some of us got a haughty spirit. We got to get along so God can deal with us. David said, Lord, created me a clean. And renew a right spirit within me. David said, Lord, I can't do it, so I need you to create in me a clean heart. He ain't talking about this thing right here, this ball of muscle that's pumping blood from different parts. He's talking about this thing right here because let me tell you, this thing would deceive you if you're not careful. This thing would get you into some trouble that's hard to get out of if you're not careful. That's why, Lord, I need you to create in me. Lord, take away these wicked thoughts. Lord, take away these wicked intentions. Take away these wicked motives, these wicked needs. Lord, take them away 
so I can be used for your glory. Yes. Yes. We're at war, church. Yes. And I want to know who's trying to be on the front line with Jesus. Who's trying to go to war? Everybody can't hand out guns. <laughs> somebody got to use the gun. Amen, somebody. Yes. We're at war. And we need all hands on deck. You know, we are still a year and a half going on over now in the midst of a pandemic. Ministry, as we know it in so many facets, has been changed. So we as the people of God, we got to go to war. Because we still have a mandate that was given to us by God. We still got to go out preaching and teaching the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. We got to continue to do that even in this day and time. But what the devil would have you do is get scared. What the devil would have you do is be afraid. Well, you know, we're in the pandemic, you know. Uh, folks still need to be saved, church. There are still people that need to know God. There are still people that are standing in need of a blessing. And the only one that can give it to them is the Lord God of heaven. So we got to go to war, church. The devil, you cannot continue to allow him to just have control. And just have his way. You're God's child. Stand, you ought to have a smile on your face every day that you wake up because you say you are a child of God. You are a child of the king. And, and at any moment's notice, you have a God that's ready to stand up for you. You better not mess with me. I call God here and make the earth shake. You all about you? Man, you better, you better stop looking at me crazy. I had a rain fall on you. You better stop messing with me. I have the elements to get to acting up around here because when God speaks, Everything goes to war. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if the wind got sense enough to obey God. If the earth got sense enough to obey God. If the fog got sense enough. If the mountains were come down low. So you ain't got no place to hide. You're going to have to do what God told you to do. You're going to have to follow God's will. And you're going to have to be obedient. Put your hands to the plow. The Bible says that no man that has put his hands to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom. No individual that starts on fire for God and loses that flame and fire and departs from God. You're not fit. Somebody here this morning, you lost your fire. You need to get your fire rekindled again. You need to get back on fire for God. You can't be slowful and lackadaisical all of your life. You got to get to a place to where you're willing to do some work for God. You're willing to be used by God. Lord, I may not be able to do what everybody else can do, but whatever I can do, Lord, use me. You know, somebody may be able to use a vacuum cleaner the bed than somebody else. Guess what? You can vacuum. Everybody can do something for the glory of God. And when everybody is working, let me tell you, wouldn't it be a shame just imagine you out there on the front line and the enemy is coming and you know you're about to go to war. But then you just have half of the people just say, you know what? I don't think I'm ready for battle today. It's going to put you at a disadvantage. Because you don't have the people that you need to do what it is that needs to get done. And imagine the half that you got left. Some looking this way. Some looking that way. Some looking behind. You're going to be messed up because everybody is not focused on what you need to be focused on. Am I painting the picture for y'all this morning? That when we as the people of God, some can be going over here, going over there, going back here. We got to have our minds and our hearts set on the prize, set on the goal of heaven and working towards that goal. And God will bless us with those things that we need. We are at war. But by the grace of God, by the blessings of God, let me tell you, we're going to come out victorious. And we're going to win because of the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. He thought enough of us, church, to go to war for our souls. To go to war for our spirits. 
He thought enough of us not to leave us in the conditions that we're in and allow Satan to have his way with us and destroy our spirits, to destroy our souls. So he thought himself enough to come and to go to war for us. He didn't bring no bullets. He didn't bring no guns. He brought himself. He brought himself as a willing sacrifice. He laid down his life. He gave his life as a willing sacrifice so that you and I may have a right to eternal life. And he says, whosoever will, let them come. No matter where you are, no matter where you've been, no matter matter what you've been involved in. He says, come, I'll make you new. I'll make you clean. I'll give you a new start. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things shall become new. Anybody need a new start this morning? Anybody need a new beginning this morning? God will give you that new beginning that you're standing in the need of. You may not be saved this morning. You may not know the Lord as you're saved this morning. You're not a member of the body of Christ. We urge you this morning. And don't put off today for what you plan on doing at another time. I'm sure you've heard it today. You've heard it many a time. People are dying. People are leaving this world. You don't know how much time you got left. So with the time that you got left, you need to go ahead and say yes to Jesus. You need to make Jesus your choice. Come by hearing his word. He that hear the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Believe the same except that you believe that I am he. You shall all likewise perish. Repent of your sins. Confirm Confess Christ as your Savior. Be buried with him in baptism. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. Don't be afraid. Don't put it off. You don't know how much time you got left. Take advantage. Do what you need to do. As together we stand and sing the song Restore of invitation. Restore my spirit, Lord. I need restore. Lord, you know that my, my heart is weary.